Welcome to Chromeillusion.com. I'm Stephen Burns, and we're going to address some techniques inside of Lightroom where we're going to make some edits inside of Lightroom and then export it right on out to Photoshop. So let's go ahead and go to the Develop module. Select it. Immediately, I have this before and after chosen. I can, you know, I can keep clicking on it to get any view that I choose. So how about if I go back to the original so we can see the full image side by side alright so now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the adjustment brush here right up here in the top right hand corner I'm gonna select the adjustment brushes automatically the adjustments come down so I have my all the adjustments that we have here is exposure brightness contrast saturation can all be applied to one reference point okay new is selected tap down and release there's my reference point. Now, any adjustments that I make here will be will be adjust will be applied to this reference. Next to the P key, the right hand side of the P key, I if I press to the right, the brackets to the right will allow my mouse to go bigger or the brush goes si resize my brush larger. To resize the brush smaller, we're going to hit the bracket to the left hand side, right next to the right bracket, and I'm going to start to paint down my effects. Okay, so over here just just to just to show you I've got the sizing and feather also selected here and my shortcut for my feather hold the shift key down bracket key to the right while holding the shift key makes gives you more of a feathered edge you see that there let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger so you can see this a little bit better now hold the shift key down and press the bracket key to the left and it resizes the feather smaller so shift bracket to the left shift bracket to the right I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more on my image because the area that I really want to affect is inside this shape here. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and bring it down just a little bit. Just this whole area in here, I want to darken that just a little bit. My exposure's up, so let's go ahead and resize my brush down just a little bit and start to paint. Okay, so as I paint, you can see the areas that have been affected. Let's go to the exposure and bring it down. You can see it's starting to darken or brighten. So those are the areas that you can physically see. I'm going to make it slightly darker just so I can focus the viewer's attention right on this area. Now, see, I've gone out a little bit. That's no big deal. I'm going to go ahead and, and bring my brush size down a little bit. Now, right down here, the flow is a little bit strong for me, so I'm going to bring the flow down. All right, so I have a little bit more control. As you've seen, let's go ahead and zoom in a little closer. Control plus to zoom in. I've spilled outside to spilled outside these areas here. So hold down the Alt key or your Option if you're on a Mac, and this takes away your effect. It's almost like working and masking in Photoshop, where you're painting with black or white. Here we're holding down the Alt key, and that will take my effect away completely. So I'm gonna come right over here to the side. I spilled over here holding down the alt key and I can take it away and I'm gonna take it away right off these edges here because I want that to be untouched these little ledges so what this is is salt and this shot was taken out in Death Valley National Park in bad water to be exact alright control minus I'm gonna bring it down a little bit okay and as you can see here we are it's gonna bring this down bring down the edge Let's go ahead and reduce the size of the mouse and just go to the edge. This and we're starting to darken this area down. Now it's a little bit too dark. That's the beauty of this adjustment brush, is all the adjustments is going to relate to this particular control point. So bring it up a little brighter so it's not so dark. How about something like this? Now let's go into Photoshop and and do further edits. To do that, simply right click, okay, get your icon here, and I'm going to right click, edit in, and I'm going to edit into Photoshop. Okay, it's going to ask me, do I want to keep those adjustments? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and, and select edit copy with adjustments, edit it, and what it's going to do is it's going to pop right into Photoshop. Photoshop's going to jump right up in front of us. It's loading up. Say yes, and there it is. Okay, so 
Okay, so what you've seen is actually two of these were opened up because if we go back in the Lightroom, I had two of them selected accidentally. So I only want one. So what I'm going to do is go back into Photoshop and just simply close that one out. There's the edits that we've made. All right, let's go make some more adjustments here. Let's actually bring out some brightness along these little border areas, little salt skeins here. And I'm going to, let's go ahead and duplicate our layer. Control J or Command J. Go ahead and add a, a curves to this. And see my curves adjustment panels right over here. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit larger. Go to expanded view. And let's go ahead and make the salt skeins a little brighter. I only want to, to affect the skeins right in here, the, out, the, the surrounding areas of the darker areas. So I'm going to hit Command or Control I to inverse that effect. And let's bring it in a little closer. Command plus, holding my space bar, navigate around here, hit the B key for my brush, and we're going to edit this mask with white. White is my foreground color. And let's bring the, the mouse a little bit larger in Photoshop. And let's start to, now my brush is a little bit of a different style here. Um, that's not the one that I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter it right up here. Once the brush is selected, third icon from the left on your options panel, let's select it and let's edit this. Take off the shape dynamics, go to transfer. I want to use my Wacom pen, the pressure from the Wacom pen to adjust it. And I'm going to save this brush because if I don't, I'm going to lose it. And there it is. All right. So I'm going to close this out temporarily. Let's move this on over and let's start making some adjustments. As we start to lay down the technique of the brush, we're revealing the adjustment by painting with white on the black mask. So Alt or Option click on the mask. You can see the mask. Let's bring it on up. Bring this around. And I'm just moving the brush erratically so it matches the texture around my shape and I'm going to bring this on back on, on down I'm going to go ahead and make the brush a little bit smaller as the skeins become a little smaller toward the back here okay make it slightly larger and again it's the bracket to the key to the left and bracket key to the right to resize my brush just like in Lightroom it's the same shortcut in Photoshop there we go. Make it a little bit larger. And now make the brush a little smaller as we go into the background. All right. So we're just about done. I'm not looking for a perfect edit here. I just wanted to show you that you can make your edits in layers in Photoshop and then go back into Lightroom. All right. Control minus, bring it on down. Okay, so there we are. So we've made some edits here. And how about if I actually merge all this together and blur out the background? I'm going to hit Command, Command or Control, Option or Alt, Shift E. That merges everything together. What I'm going to do is go to my filter menu and convert it to a smart filter. You'll see why in just a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to tell it to use a Gaussian Blur. So I'm going to go to the Blur, Gaussian Blur, and give it a little bit of a blur to kind of blur that background out because I want to practice or apply a depth of field type of an effect or shallow depth of field effect. Now this here is what's applying the filter which is called a smart filter and these are the things we, we cover more in the intermediate class um, the filters and as well as uh, layer blend modes and so forth so let's go ahead and bring it down just a little bit and let's apply this technique just to the background I'm going to select my my gradient tool right over here that's be the six tool down on the right hand side and then I'm gonna hit the D key for default so I can so I can apply this technique to the mask so I'm going to apply it so that it begins with white, which will show the technique and will end in black on the mask. Holding the shift key, we bring it down to right about there. There it is. Okay, so 
Now I did a circular gradient, which is not really what I want to do. So we're going to go right up here in the options, make sure the linear gradient is selected. Let's do it again. There it is. Okay. I'm going to do it one more time. Shorten it up just a little bit right about there. There. So now if we get in close, you can see the background is nice and blurred and it fades off to your focus going to the foreground. All right. So you can see all our layers here. Command S or Command or Control S will save this directly back to the folder that you that the image was originally set in when you when you organize all of your images on your external hard drive. Okay, so it's just about done saving. And we're gonna go when we go back in the Lightroom, we should see all of these edits in its own um, virtual space. So let's go back in the Lightroom, and there they are. Okay, so here they are. So we have two versions actually and basically it's showing and we're gonna go right over here to develop to the library view double click and we can see it that that's our app that's that is the image that we 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 started with there is the one that uh, we completed in Photoshop they're sitting side by side right next to each other so where is it right click on the thumbnail show in Explorer and I'm using Windows and on a Macintosh it's going to be show in Finder and it's showing right here exactly where I set it inside my external photo drive under the new images under Death Valley it set it right next to the other one the 635 and 635 here okay does that make sense okay so now we can go back, bring it into Lightroom, do some more edits, and even go back into Photoshop again. So I hope this little tutorial has helped you understand that uh, whatever edits we make into in Lightroom, we can bring it over to Photoshop and bring it right back into Lightroom again to be a part of our catalog. I'm Stephen Burns. Enjoy.